Oh, is my audio connected? Is my head connected? Hey, Chance, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear, brother. What's up, man? How oh, you doing? Um, I've been better. I'm I'm recovering from cellulitis on my foot. It sucks. Oh shit! Don't feel bad, dude. I'm going through a bit of a rough time myself, dude. I just found out today through one of my close friends that one of my exes I had dated back in high school just passed away, like. A little under a month ago from health problems and i was just like what like how did i not know about this jesus so I did it. yeah like oh uh, sorry and, to hear that man were you guys still close oh dude absolutely like even though we had split you know we were still you know very good friends we were still super tight with each other mm. uh, like getting that kind of news man especially in front of your own girlfriend man that it was tough uh that sucks man um so i i got this uh this all these like little interview uh things i got some questions from the discord i tried to keep them as tame as possible hey, oh i'm so good it's a uh, dude you you would not be you would not be like bro like i'm not surprised by anything anymore i have to shit i get asked i'm just like it doesn't surprise me yeah so I figured the best part to start um, would be what makes Cyrax different from Chance. Ooh, that's actually wrote, dude. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, I'd say like what differentiates me from my, you know, one of my stage from obviously my main stage persona that everybody knows me as is the fact that outside of YouTube. I'm more, you know, relaxed. I'm more, you know, laid back. I take everything in and I just kind of, you know, try to take, you know, each day a day at a time. Mm. And whereas for my stage side, like that side of me is like the wild and out crazy, you know, doesn't give no fucks, you know, mm. will basically say anything to anyone if, you know, push. And show like that. So like that's definitely that was that's definitely a real good question. And like I said, you know, that side of me is definitely you know the crazier side, the more you know, not so much outgoing side, but the more you know, hey, you fuck with me, I'll fuck with you right back. I don't give a fuck. Hmm. So I, that leads into the next question. Actually, is a uh, so do you you put a, you put on a persona for your shows and YouTube and stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I figured that, you know, because it's like, you know, you're yeah. a little, you, you have like this like dark and like all these different types of characters are, for lack yeah. of a better word, that you play. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And like, and you know, like you said, you know, that side of me is definitely, you know, my more wild and outside and, you know, the more outlandish side. So and it's, like an, obviously, it's like an artistic yeah. choice. Yeah exactly exactly and then obviously with my original name that was actually a nickname from back in high school which was the shadow blade name that's more or less you know like my darker side my more you know i want to get inside your head and you know fuck with you any way that i can that actually inside. uh that actually leads into a question i had planned for later but we can t tackle it now who is the oh, demon oh. king shadow blade if you had to describe oh, him yeah. For me, like I said, the origins of, uh, you know, my original persona was actually a nickname um, given to me back in high school uh, by one of my good friends that unfortunately passed, you know, nine from a drowning accident. That wasn't Zach. That, that wasn't a Zach, right? No, that was no, that, no, that was the one before him. That was mine mm. and Zach's best friend, David. Okay, okay. I don't know much about, like, the early, like, years. Yeah, exactly. Not many people do. Like, there's a few that do, but not too many. I tend to think the less, like, stuff you put out publicly on the internet is better because people can get a hold of it and do all types of things with it. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, like, what was the, the nickname nickname referring to? The, like, and that's what's weird. I didn't really understand it myself at first until he sat down and explained it to me. Like, I was sitting down this one day talking to him. I was like, yo, like, why'd you give me that nickname? Like, what's up with that? Like, you could have chosen any nickname in the world. Why that? And at the time, I had just started getting into music. I had just discovered how to, you know, create instrumentals. And at that time, I was creating this really just dark, weird, eerie instrumentals. And he was like, you know, like, 
your sound is, you know, obviously a dark sound. Mm. Kind of like something you would hear coming out of the shadows, but they're also super sharp. They're fine-tuned, you know, kind of like, you know, a sword. So, you know, hence, you know, Shadow Blade. And I was yeah. like, oh, that actually makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That actually leads me into uh, the next question is... Uh, Take us through the early years before you were making music, like your childhood, before you got into oh, that. Oh, man. Uh, well, let's see. Obviously, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I grew up a military brat. My dad was in the Army. Um, you know, we had moved around base to base most of my life and whatnot until I was like 12. I don't want to interrupt you, but what division? Um, United States Army, 82nd Airborne Division. Staff oh, Sergeant. cool. My, my dad, I don't know what his exact division was, but he was a medic in the Army. Oh, nice. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Continue on. Yeah, definitely thanks to your dad, dude, for sure. Oh, well, thanks to your dad, too, man, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Small world, huh, man? Yeah. Anyway, continue on. You were saying uh, you uh, moved from yeah. place to place. Like I said, you know, I had, you know, moved around, you know, from base to base. And then, you know, when I was little, my parents had gotten a divorce. Um, my dad wound up moving to Florida. Uh, me and my mom wound up staying in Washington State where I was raised till I was like fucking, I want to say like 13, 14 at the time. Mm. And then we had decided to, you know, to pick up and move down to Florida and whatnot. And, you know, obviously I got to be around my dad a little bit here and there because I would go over to his house every other weekend. And then shortly after that, uh, Hurricane, I don't know if you remember Hurricane Charlie and all those ones back in 2004. Yeah, I think I vaguely do. I remember the other one that happened uh, in like 2009 or whatever or something around then because I was right out of high school and it was like yeah. really bad. But I don't know if I remember that one. I'm sure yeah, if I, I looked it up. Yeah, like Hurricane Charlie's, you know, that was around the time we were down in Florida. You know, Hurricane Charlie had hit and we had actually wound up living up in Baltimore, Maryland for a while to get away from the hurricanes after Charlie hit. We are like, you know, fuck this. You know, we want to get out of here and get away from all these other ones before it gets worse. So me, my mom, and my brother, we all packed up and went up to Maryland, stayed up there for a while. Um, We came back down after, the, after all the hurricanes that happened. And we were initially supposed to go back to my hometown in Washington State out in Seattle. We were supposed to go back out there. But as we were going up, uh, we had gotten word from my older sister that my nephew Troy was being born. Mm -hmm. so we were like, you know, like, why don't we make a stop in Ohio? Like, that'd be cool, you know, and catch up with everybody again and whatnot and see the family and whatnot. And we wound up doing that. And, you know, after he was born, we just kind of decided, like, you know what? Like, you know, we just kind of ultimately planted root here and we just, I've been here in Ohio ever since. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, I obviously got into high school and whatnot. And before I even touched music, I was drawing all the time. Like, I was that kid in class. Like, you know that kid in class that would, like, always draw on the back of their classwork and shit when they're bored? Oh, dude, that was me all the time. That, that was that kid. I was <laughs> and I suck at drawing. <laughs> dude, my teachers would get so pissed, but they would be, like, in such shock. They would be like, dude, like, this is actually really good, but why the fuck are you drawing on the back of your classwork? Like, this is actually <laughs> good, but why are you doing this? It's like, yeah. oh, everybody else is doing their work. I got nothing else to do, so why <laughs> the fuck not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, going from that... Uh, this is a this is one that I was personally interested in. What uh these actually two. What is your favorite project you've made musically? Ooh, that's actually a real tough one, dude. Shit, cuz I've done a lot of really good ones. But for me personally, I would have to say more or less like definitely obviously one of them would definitely be, you know, my two albums that I dropped back in 2018 which are still you know, widely considered as you know one of my personal favorites. Is that the dub the uh, dubstep one? Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. Um, knockout and evolution. Like those two are definitely two of my favorites for sure. Those will always be because those are like you know two of the ones that I really took a lot of time on. But as far as like my regular stuff goes, I would have to say more or less you know 
my more you know personalized stuff like the stuff that actually talks about my life and you mm. know what i've gone through like um mm. hidden in your lies um you know uh fucking um another day is over like some of that because those actually touch on you know real events and real stuff that i had you know gone through you know through you know certain periods in my life where you know i was in bad situations i had you know been you know bullied a lot in you know, high school i had you know as you know already as a lot of people know i've been you know in really dark places in my life and those songs kind of remind me you know to you know like you know to keep your head up like you know there's always you know better things to come so like those songs more or less are kind of like an anthem of my life in a sense mm -hmm. So uh, the, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, the second half of uh, this question uh, is what is your least favorite project you've ever done? Like something you can look oh, back on and they're like, eh, oh, I don't man. know why I did that. Cause <laughs> everyone yeah, has dude, one. Honestly, I can honestly say, dude, I would have to say my album Between the Lines is probably my least favorite project that I've done. Because that's when I was just starting out in hip hop. I just started to... You know, getting the rap, and I was that young kid that you know thought he knew what he was doing, was you know going all over the place. And for what it was, it wasn't bad. But listening back now, I'm just like, dude, I could have done that so much better. Oh, dude, we all have one. Uh, now we uh, have, we have a question uh, from Discord. Uh, this is coming from Mandy. Uh, she says, "Where were you on 9/11?" I was in, <laughs> but like I was in school when it had happened, mm -hmm. when the twin towers had hit, and I was in. I want to say, I think I was, yeah, I was going to school at Roosevelt Academy with my childhood best friends uh, Rachel and Marcus, who ironically are actually engaged, which is pretty funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I was in school with them in class at the time when we had heard. At the twin towers had gotten hit and like that right there and at the time i didn't really understand you know what was going on like i knew like it was a major event but i didn't understand what yeah i mean on. it was definitely uh tra traumatic i didn't even get told what happened until like hours after it happened i was like a little yeah. kid yeah exactly and back then i was like oh shit like you know a major events happening what's going on and then later on, like two, three years, two, three, four years after, when I was in, you know, just going into, like, towards like the end of middle school, towards of like, you know, junior high and high school, like that's when I like really realized, like, oh shit, like this is actually a real thing, like holy fuck. Yeah. Um. Here's uh. Here's one that I uh, had. Uh, you mentioned your brother a lot. Uh, how much has he impacted your development as an artist? Oh, dude, honestly, in almost in almost every sense, because you know, not only you know did I pick because my older brother, like he loved to read a lot, and it was through him that you know I really got into reading a lot. Um, I started to write a lot. And like, and I had started to notice, like, as I was writing, like, as I was getting older and writing, I had started writing poems. Mm -hmm. And like, later on down the road, I had started to realize, like, holy shit, like, these aren't just poems. These are like, legit, you know, thoughts and stuff not only coming out of my head, but these are legitimate incidences that have happened in my life. And I initially started to think, like, you know, what can I do? You know, like, should I have these published? Should I go through a publisher? And at the time, that was very hard to do. Oh, yeah, because, definitely. You know, because, you know, there was no, you know, self-publishing at the time. There was no, you know, companies that were looking for, you know, poetry of that style. So I was like, you know, like, what can I do? And I initially, you know, shut off the idea of you know what to do with it and i had you know just stuck to my artwork and shit like that and then it was around like 2000 it was like early 2009 that i had shown you know my 
you know, one of mine and my friend Zach's uh, friends, David, who, like I had mentioned earlier, had passed in 09 from a drowning accident. It was like earlier that year. It was in like February or March of that year that I had showed him some of my poetry work and the stuff I had written down. And he's like, dude, like, these could actually be songs. Like, if you structured this right, like, these could definitely, you know, be songs. And ultimately, you know, they had started to take on that form. And, you know, and as, you know, you've seen and a lot of people have seen, you know, those songs, you know, kind of came to life once I started, you know, you know, finding that sound that suits me, that suits my style and really what I'm about. So, you know, definitely my brother has made a major, major impact in, you know, pretty much everything that, you know, I've done music wise, writing. Hmm. It's definitely a huge reason as to why I'm so into fucking books. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next question I got is, uh, what is a daily routine for Cyrex? Oh, that's a good one. That's one I actually get asked a lot. That one's actually not that uncommon of a question, but it's still kind of funny. Like, as like before me and my girlfriend got together, it was usually, you know, I'd wake up, you know, hop on YouTube, see if, you know, any of my favorite YouTubers like Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, uh, Slap Train, you know, or different people that I watch. You know, I had uploaded anything, and, like, if I'm doing something or whatever, like, I'll throw them on. You know, take a shower, do whatever. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, I would get out. Um, I would record, like, a quick thing in the morning. If I had something that I wanted to record or put up, I would do that. Then I would eat breakfast, and then from there, it would just, you know, vary. Like, if I wanted to do, like, a live stream or whatever, or if I wanted to upload something or you know, make a music video or something like it definitely, you know, very day to day. As of right now, it's definitely, you know, it's somewhat the same still. As of right now, you know, it's definitely, you know, wake up probably around like one or two in the afternoon with this COVID shit going on. Oh, yeah. I'm waking up like, I'm waking up at like noon, one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, which is around the time that my girl gets up because like one o'clock for me would be like twelve o'clock her time. Mm. So like you know she's usually up around that time so like you know i'll get a hold of her and we'll talk eat breakfast together and whatnot and you know from there i'll just you know work on my artwork hang out with her hang out with family and whatnot so that's pretty much my daily routine as oh. of right now all right uh so the next one is uh what's your opinion about where you live and the people who live around you Oh, that's actually a good one. Honestly, dude, like, I I gotta admit, most people would say that they hate the people that they're around. But honestly, I genuinely like a lot of the people around me because when we moved in here, into this house back in 2010, yeah, it was about 2010 that we moved into this house. And, like, back then, you know, I was the new guy on the block. Everybody was kind of like, eh. You know, whatever, but over the years, like, I've become, you know, really close with some of our neighbors that, you know, I'm still very close with, like, our neighbor, Miss Jackie, right next door, who's a literally, like, she's this really cool old black lady, but she's a literally, like, family, like, for fucking sure, like, mm -hmm. something's going on, you know, she's right there, like, hey, what's up, what's good, so, like, uh -huh. I can definitely say, you know, I've definitely, you know, grown to like a lot of the people around me and stuff, like, there's not too much bad shit like there was back then, but it is more or less tame and quiet now than it was back then, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so I have another one from Discord. Uh, this is from Cable. And I, I know Cable, so she's not trolling when she asks this. Yeah. I think she's just yeah. curious. Uh, she asks, were you in a special needs class in school? No disrespect. I'm just curious. I actually was. Uh, when I was in high school, <clears throat> they had a thing where I was in special needs classes. But they made it like it was normal. Like it looked like, you know, your normal average run of the mill high school class. But like it was like a, a special needs kind of thing. And I didn't realize it till like my freaking twelfth grade year. And I'm sitting there like, dude, why do I need to be in here? Like obviously I'm good enough to be out there and I just proved it. So like why y'all got me in here? So yeah, I've definitely you know, I've taken special needs classes pretty much most of my life, honestly. Yeah. So, like, I'm not a stranger to that. Like, I love, I love it when people ask that because, you know, 
that gives them an inside look at you know what I'm about and how I came up. So I think people I are un- like, like oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think people unfairly like have a view of people who go to special needs class. Like oh, they, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like I said, you know, I grew up with special needs kids most of my life, so I totally get it. Uh, speaking of school, how was school for you, and uh, what did you excel at? Oh, man. For me, school, it, it, it was kind of weird. You know, like I said, my first few years growing up, I would bounced around from military base to military base. So that part of it was definitely rough. But, you know, once I got through, you know, middle school and high school, I, it kind of started to ease out. But then, you know, with high school came, you know, the freshman hazing shit, you know, the typical run of the mill stuff with that. Mm. And then, you know, as the years went on, you know, some of the bullying still did continue. And at some points, it did get really bad. But for the most part, you know, it was more or less, you know, it was good. Like, you know, I had, you know, my friends there. I had, um, ironically, a couple of my cousins that had gone to high school with me. So, like, it was it was awkward at times, but it was definitely, you know, it was cool. Yeah. Uh, so the next one I had uh, is you had a brief foray into film with, uh, I think it was The Darkness. Uh, who is yeah. your favorite director? Oh, man, definitely, you know, guys like Tim Burton, uh, Steven Spielberg. Um, I'm trying to think. The one director that does the uh, fucking um, Conjuring films. Uh, oh, James Wan. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, him, um, guys like... Um, the one that did uh fucking uh the Annabelle series. Uh well I think that's also James Wan in the beginning. Yeah, but I, I think, think they passed uh, it off to other people. Yeah, um guys like <laughs> them. A lot of people don't know this, but um guys like uh Hayao Miyazaki and you know, Studio Ghibli and stuff like that, like different directors like that have definitely, you know, played a huge impact, you know, on you know, everything I do from, you know, film work to you know, my artwork, the, um, the manga that I'm currently working on, which you actually got to see a preview of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming along. I, like I said, it, it's yeah. not particularly my style. I'm more yeah. for like a sketched kind of really yeah. detailed thing. But, you know, yeah. everyone has their own tastes. Oh, absolutely. Dude. Like I said, I'm in the same boat with you on that. Like, you know, slice of life normally isn't my thing. And I'm more or less in the same boat that you are when it comes to anime. But at the same time, I kind of wanted to bring... You know that real life aspect that nobody really brings into any of that anymore i kind of wanted to bring that back and be like hey you know this is what you guys are missing out on here like this is like real life shit that goes on like bring mm-hmm. that stuff back because that's what pulled us into this in the first place definitely um where do you sit politically on the political spectrum Oh, man, for me, honestly, like, I'm definitely on, you know, I can't say that I'm I'm on either side, but at the same time, you know, I kind of try to see, you know, both, you know, points of views, like, with the whole Trump and Biden thing, yeah, Trump's got some really good points, but at the same time, Biden's got some good points as well, so it's it's definitely tough, it's, it's definitely a and on the fence kind of thing for me you probably fall into like a centrist point of view then. yeah pretty much like yeah. for me it's like hey whatever happens happens like i'm not in control of that like unless it affects my everyday life why should i worry about it you know yeah so i don't know what this next question means it comes from discord but it's from kleptost uh, asking mm-hmm. have you considered trying to partner with ip2 i have no idea what that means Okay, IP2 basically is one of the major um, players in like a lot of the cyberbullying and shit like that. Um, I've oh. had, a few, yeah, I've had, I've had a few run-ins with them, and the first run-in really wasn't that bad. They were genuinely cool people. Like, not all of them are bad, but you know, there are the few in there that do claim IP2 that are, you know, definitely sketchy. But honestly. <laughs> like i've considered it and i've you know definitely looked at it and honestly it's like no offense to ip2 at all whatsoever you know i fucks with a lot of you guys you guys some of you guys are actually really cool but honestly like it's just not for me okay 
Uh, these next couple questions are going to get a little like uh, personal. I'm just going to give you a heads oh. up. Uh, so my first question is, what is your biggest regret in life? Oh, my biggest regret in life. Oh, man, that's definitely a tough one because I've, I've definitely done a lot of crazy shit <laughs> when I was younger, to say the least. Mm. <laughs> but then, but then, you know, we've all done crazy shit when we were kids. Oh, yeah. My, my biggest regret, honestly, I could say is, you know, not listening to those around me that I should have listened to in the very beginning when I started this whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, back then I was young. I was a kid. You know, I thought I knew everything. You know, I thought I was, you know, a boss and this and that. And then, you know, over the years, I started to learn, like, oh, shit, like, there's a lot more to this than just, you know, uploading and sitting back and letting the stuff come in. Like, you got to, you know, do something and stand out. So yeah. I definitely do regret, I do regret not taking the advice of those that, you know, did try to help me, like, for sure. Uh, the next one is, if you could change uh, one thing about yourself, what would you change? Oh, I would definitely, I know this is going to kind of shock everybody because a lot of people would not expect this, but I would have to say definitely the way that I go off on people, like I would definitely change, you know, how, you know, I approach, you know, certain situations like with the whole, you know, Marty saga bullshit, like I definitely would have approached that differently had I known what was going on so i would definitely you know change you know the fact that you know i do have a bit of a hot head <laughs> yeah uh so uh i often think that we're defined more by the tragedies that befall us rather than the good times what yeah. tragedy has shaped you in some degree oh i would definitely say um the major one that definitely has well t the two that definitely has you know shaped me is you know, obviously the loss of, you know, my best friend Zach back in 2015, mm -hmm. which was actually the same year that I had lost my brother earlier that year. Oh, that's so, like, rough. definitely, the, yeah, it was, dude. Like, I had lost my brother in February of that year. And then in December of that year, I had lost, you know, Zach to, you know, that shooting and whatnot. Mm. So, like, 2015 was definitely a very rough year for me, to say the least. Like, that was definitely one of my roughest years. Um, definitely that, and, you know, I can honestly say um, the loss of, you know, honestly, several people, such as, you know, Chester Bennington, Chris Cornell, uh, Van Halen. Like, those definitely, you know, showed me quite a bit, honestly. Like, you know, the passing of... You know, my brother and my friend in 2015, like, those definitely showed me that, like, you know, you definitely got to, you know, take each day at a time, you know, and you can't, you know, dwell on the past because if you do, it, you're just going to end up making the same mistakes over and over and over, and it's just going to be an endless cycle. And then with Chester and his loss, which, you know, as a lot of people know, I grew up listening to Lincoln Park in high school. And that's kind of how I got into the band was through, you know, their earlier stuff. And yeah. like, you know, that definitely his, you know, obviously the whole world suffered a loss yeah. that day. But, you know, like that kind of like his passing kind of showed me like, you know, like, you know, tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Like, you know, there's only today. So like, you definitely got to, you know, do what you can to help people. You know, and, you know, if they are going through those tough times, you know, you got to reassure them and show them, hey, you know, like, you're not alone in this. There are people out there that go through, you know, what he went through. You just got to be willing to, you know, take that stand and, like, actually reach out and be like, hey, you know, this is what I'm going through. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Dr. Yoshi from Discord. Who do you think killed Jeffrey Epstein? I honestly don't know too much about that case, so I can't really say. Well, uh, I mean, he was uh, taken into custody for pedoph uh, pedophilia, and uh, then he allegedly committed suicide, but it just seemed way too convenient. So many people think that uh, a politician or someone who he had dirt on killed him. So that's where that question yeah, comes I mean, from. Um, you like said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not too familiar with that case, so... 
you know, like I can't really speak on that. Yeah. Um, you often have issues with your exes. Are there any that you're on good terms with? Um, I was definitely, you know, obviously before her passing, um, a month ago, which I just found out today about, um, you know, my ex Alexi, I'm still, you know, I was on good terms with her and whatnot. Like me and her were still, you know, super tight. Um, I want to say me and Megan are on somewhat good terms, but not really. Like we don't really talk. Like if we do, it's like, Hey, how you doing? You know, whatever. Yeah. So and there are a few exes, you know, that I'm on good terms with. Like, not too many because of how they've done me wrong mm-hmm. in the past. Like, there are a few that, you know, I'm still, you know, good friends with to this day that are, you know, super cool. That Like, I'm looking back now. And, you know, and now that I am with, you know, Caitlin, you know, and the one that I actually want to spend the rest of my life with. Like, looking back now, I'm like, I'm glad me and, you know, this... You know, other one over here, you know, ended up good friends because now I'm actually with somebody that actually, you know, is not about that bullshit. One second. I'm sorry. My alarm's going off. <laughs> oh, you're good, man. Um, that actually leads quite uh, well into the next question, which is what is the ideal life for you in 20 years? Like your house, your location, your family. What do you, oh, what man, do you think that's about? Definitely, that's definitely a good question. I'm like, I don't know. A lot of people ask that, but for me. Like, it's not your typical, you know, oh, I want a mansion, this and that. Like, even if, you know, let's, let's just say, for example, you know, my artwork does take off, you know, and I do start doing good with that. Um, you know, for me, it would just be, you know, a simple house, you know, for, you know, me and her and, you know, and if God willing, you know, we have kids or whatever, you know, definitely, you know, stuff like that. You know, just your typical... You know, normal, average, everyday family, you know, a nice little car, nothing, you know, expensive, like something reliable that doesn't break every time you tap a freaking curb or some shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so the next question I have is, uh, what's going on with the engagement in the wedding? Is there a ring and uh, how will uh, you provide for her and will you stream the wedding? Asks Ear Juice. Oh, that's a good one. Um, as far as uh, streaming the wedding goes, we are working on a way to do that. Uh, my brother Sean is actually going to be the best man at the wedding shot. My brother Sean was good. Um, but yeah, we are going to try to stream it. Um, there is a ring that me and her looked at that, you know, I do want to get for it just with, you know, COVID going on and, you know, family being out of work and me not being able to do anything really much right now. It's definitely... Uh, but, you know, there is definitely a ring involved. Uh, we're looking at either sometime in August of next year or August of the year after, depending on what goes on with this COVID shit. But there is, you know, a month. We just got to figure out, like, what specific day that we want. But then everything's going good so far. Like, everything's in the works and, you know, going good so far. Okay. Uh, and uh, how did the engagement happen and how romantic were you? Believe it or not, a lot of people, like, don't see this side of me, but I'm literally, like, I know this is crazy coming from, you know, shit that people have seen, but I actually am definitely, thanks to my mom raising me my whole life on her own, I'm definitely, you know, one of those hopeless romantic kind of guys. Mm-hmm. So it was definitely cool, you know, um, you know, unfortunately it had to be over FaceTime because, you know, obviously with the lockdown and everything, um, but it was definitely, you know, around her family and stuff and whatnot. So it was definitely, you know, very romantic and stuff. It was me, her, I think it was like her grandmother or her stepmom or whatever, uh, her sister Paige. And, you know, a few family members that were there and stuff and whatnot. And, you know, like me and her were sitting down, you know, watching movies with her family. And it, just, it was just one of those things that just kind of happened. I was just like... I was sitting there thinking about it like the whole time we were watching the movie and like everybody got up to do stuff and like literally they heard like right as soon as I said I was like hey you know I got a you know a question for you and like literally everybody stopped dead what they were doing there was it's kind of like they knew almost it was weird like they almost knew what was gonna happen and like you know I obviously you know popped the question she said yes um her, her sister 
her sister Paige is like straight up like and I understand where she's coming from because that's her family she flat out said she's like you hurt her I will put my foot up your ass I was like don't worry that's not gonna happen well I'm sure I'm sure she will because she does karate eh <laughs> <laughs> well it's not necessarily karate it's um, actually um hedon which is basically a korean style swordsmanship which is what caitlin does oh okay yeah um, yeah i actually wound up getting to see her caitlin i actually got to see caitlin practice last week which was actually a lot of fun like i got to meet um her master rose which was super cool her master rose is she's tough but she's definitely very fun definitely you know, cool to be around and stuff. So it, it was definitely a lot of fun. To, it was definitely cool to see that. Yeah. Uh, the next question is, what is best in life? Oh, what is best in life? That's. It depends on what angle you're coming at that from. But for me, uh, for me, like what's best in life is just enjoying life and just kind of, you know, taking every day, you know, as it comes at you, you know, because like, you know, like I said earlier, you know, tomorrow is never guaranteed for any of us. So yeah. you gotta, you kind of take, you know, each day, you know, as it comes at you and try to make, you know, the best out of it, whether you're having a, the worst day in the world or whatever, you know, like you definitely gotta, you know, make the most of what you got with what you have around you. Uh, what is your opinion on the Holocaust? Uh as far as like you're gonna have to be more specific on that one like well th there there are a few amount of people who question the numbers uh, the number of jews killed and the validity of the records considering there really were none uh, uh some people yeah. even go as far as to say it didn't happen i wouldn't say i'm particularly one of those people but i do think the numbers have inflated over the years without any concrete evidence so do you have any uh, yeah, opinions on yeah. that I can honestly say that back then it was definitely very hard to tell because, you know, there was so much going on with, you know, Hitler doing what he did at the time. And a lot of people don't know this about Hitler, but he had um, actually had um, some sort of um, illness that would like make his hands shake a lot. And it was actually in a documentary. I forget what documentary it was, but he was dealing with that. Um... You know, on top of obviously doing the horrid things that he had done. Mm. Uh, and a lot of people don't know this, but uh, David Draymond's grandparents, uh, the lead vocalist of the Stir, David Draymond, his grandparents were actually survivors of the Holocaust. Yeah, it makes sense with his name, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, seeing that, I was like, holy shit. And like, he did go into some detail, like not a lot, but he did go into some detail of, you know, like what it was like for his grandparents because he had... You know, grow up, you know, he grew up, you know, hearing the stories and, you know, seeing what they went through, you know, through stuff that he was, you know, told and shown by his family. So he definitely has a very good grasp on that for sure. Yeah. Um, but for me, ultimately, you know, it's like, you know, like you said, the numbers have gone up and up and down a lot over the years. So it's definitely very hard to tell. Yeah. Um, the uh, next thing uh, I wanted to ask is a lot of people see you use uh, the word faggot a lot and they take it as like uh, yeah, a, a derogatory like, slur. Yeah, what is yeah, what is like, what is what is your opinion on homosexuality? Honestly, I have no problem with it because like, a lot of people don't realize this, but my older brother was gay. So like I'm used to it. I was raised around it. Um, a lot of my friends are all spectrums of it. You know, I have friends that you know oh. Oh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they cut oh you gotta you gotta wrap up man oh oh god damn it okay well uh i guess we had to cut this short uh that was cyrax um i had some more questions but I, I, I don't know what happened. Uh, he said he had to cut it short. Uh, I'm just going to run through the rest of the questions that we didn't get to, answer, uh, to ask him. And uh, if he comes back, I'll, uh, I'll ask it and I'll edit this part out. Uh, what is your favorite manga and who is your favorite mangaka? What makes Music Biz Marty so detestable? 
Who is Jamie Nicole? Marty has said you gave your ex HIV. What's up with that? It's been mentioned before that you spent a night in jail. Some say for attacking your mother. Others say for stealing a hefty sum of gold from a mine called Moria. What's the real story? Tree Master Bob asks, do you have a compulsive issue like Tourette's? He notices you seem to have a tick for scratching your head. What's his plan for Marty and the police? Does he see Jasmine as releasing porn, as revenge porn, as a federal crime? And finally, where does Cyrex go from here? I want to thank Cyrex for coming by, and uh, yeah, 